You have probably heard of NASA's Apollo missions that first landed humans on the moon, but did you know that 270 moon rocks were brought back with the Apollo 11 and 17 missions? Did you also know that 180 of those rocks are now missing? What happened to the rocks? Who took them? And why would someone take them? All this and more coming up next. Our story involves theft, a coup, arson, a crab fishing captain from the show Deadliest Catch, space, astronauts, a sting operation, and more. The moon rocks that were brought back consisted of fragments of varying shapes and sizes and are likely billions of years old. Following the lunar missions in 1970 and 1973, the moon rocks were actually placed onto commemorative plaques by the U.S. government and then gifted to 135 different countries around the world, to each of the 50 U.S. states and to U.S. overseas territories. In addition, displays were also gifted to the United Nations. Now, you would think that being such a rare item, most of these moon rocks would be kept on display somewhere safe protected with all kinds of anti-theft lasers or something, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Some of the displays have just sort of gone missing over the years with no explanation whatsoever, but here are some of the more ridiculous stories. The Cypress Moon Rock a retired NASA agent revealed in September of 2009 that the Goodwill moon rock intended for the Republic of Cyprus went for sale on the black market in 2003. But the international mystery of how the Cyprus Goodwill moon rock got to the black market actually begins long before that. During a coup in 1974, the presidential palace of Cyprus was burned to the ground. The moon rock plaque from Apollo 17 was considered lost at that time. However, it then came out that the Cyprus Goodwill moon rock plaque wasn't actually given to the Cyprus government. It was actually in the U.S. Embassy in Nicosia for protection from the coup. The U.S. diplomats who would present the moon rocks to the government of Cyprus fled the island after U.S. Ambassador to Cyprus, Roger Davies, was unfortunately killed during the coup. The plaque, moon rock, and Cyprus flag wouldn't turn up again for another 29 years. When the son of the previous U.S. diplomat put it up for sale on the black market, U.S. law enforcement stepped in at this point and the display went missing once again. In May of 2010, NASA's Office of Inspector General recovered the Apollo 17 plaque and were planning to re-gift it. The Cyprus Apollo 11 commemorative podium plaque is lost and never was recovered. Ireland Apollo 11 Moon Rock Just after 1 a.m. on October 3, 1977, a fire erupted with an unknown cause in the Dunsink Observatory in Dublin, where the rocks were on display. Alongside an 18th century orrery, whatever that is, speculation about the fire's cause included robbery disguised with arson. Unfortunately, the debris from the fire, including the lunar display, was dumped at the Finglass landfill. Obviously, finding the display in the landfill would be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Unfortunately, the moon rocks, which were valued at approximately $5 million, were never recovered. Thankfully, Ireland still has their other moon rock from Apollo 17, which resides in the National Museum of Ireland in Dublin. Malta Apollo 17 Lunar Sample one day in 2004, the curator of the Museum of National History in Medina noticed the moon rock was missing from its display. However, the plaque and Maltese flag that was flown on the Apollo 17 mission were left behind. That's right, the amateur thief left behind the only things to prove the authenticity and therefore the value of the moon rocks. Amnesty was granted to the thieves momentarily in an effort to recover the rocks, but unfortunately, Malta's Apollo 17 moon rock is still missing to this day, though they do still have their Apollo 11 moon rock. Alaska's Apollo 11 Moon Rock Elizabeth Riker was assigned the task of hunting down Alaska's Apollo Moon Rock by her professor as a part of Operation Lunar Eclipse. In an article, she asked for help from the citizens of Alaska in order to find it, and the hunt was on. Enter Coleman Anderson, a crab fishing captain who appeared on the TV show Deadliest Catch, claimed to have scrounged through the rubble from a massive fire at the Alaska Transportation Museum in 1973, where the moon rocks were kept. Anderson, who was just a child at the time, later claimed to have recovered the moon rocks and cleaned them up. He filed a lawsuit against the state of Alaska in an attempt to deem the rocks his sole property. The lawsuit presumably failed, and the rocks were returned by Anderson on December 7, 2012. The Canadian Moon Rock Displays In 1972, 80 youth ambassadors from all countries of the United Nations 
participated in a 10-day international youth science tour. Among these ambassadors was Jamie Matthews, age 13 at the time, who was the Canadian Youth Ambassador. He was rewarded for writing what must have been a really good essay because his reward was to travel to Washington, D.C. and to meet President Richard Nixon and Vice President Spiro Agnew. In addition, they were then flown to Orlando to stay in a luxury hotel before watching the launch of Apollo 17 from NASA's Mission Control Center. They not only witnessed the launch, but even got to talk to astronauts Eugene Sermon and Harrison Schmidt while they were on the surface of the moon. Matthews saw Neil Armstrong in person and even became lifetime pen pals with Armstrong's daughter. Each youth ambassador would receive a lunar sample from the Apollo 17 mission, and Matthews received the Canadian Goodwill Moon Rock which he kept on display in his room for a while before giving it to the National Museum of Natural Sciences in Ottawa during a ceremony where it would be kept for several years. In 1978, the museum lost the lunar sample during a national tour. Matthews was told it was stolen during the tour in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. As the years went on, Matthews eventually became a professor at the University of British Columbia. One day, while teaching class, he googled the Canadian moon rock display and found a picture taken in the year 2000. Surprised by his discovery, he continued googling and discovered it was located in a museum warehouse in Aylmer, Quebec. The warehouse is described, of course, as being akin to the one at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was no exaggeration. The warehouse was so large, it had so many items that the rocks became lost among them. It was complete chance that Matthews found a picture of it and proved that it still existed somewhere. But wait, didn't the museum tell Matthews that it was stolen? That's right, they lied to Matthew in order to cover up the fact that they lost the Canadian moon rocks. In fact, there wasn't even a 1978 national tour. It was 100% a made-up story to cover up the museum's incompetence. Eventually, the Apollo 17 Goodwill moon rock display would be put back on display at the Canada Science and Technology Museum in Ottawa. That's about it for today guys. If you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting the channel by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.